Watch along while I sew these totally radical 1980s shorts. This is my first time using a buttonholer and sewing darts and a fly front. Let's go! Check out this amazing pattern, you guys. <laughs> This is from 1986. It's uh, Simplicity 7396. Pleated front shorts were so popular in the 80s and 90s, as well as the cuffed legs. This will be the second part of a two-piece set. Let's see if I can pull it off. I'm cutting the pattern and for the shorts, I'm five foot one. I did make a petite adjustment. It's gonna be an inch shorter here. Well, I got a little nervous about a full inch, so I changed it to a half inch. See how that works out? For double thickness, fold the fabric with right side inside. This will be scary. Pocket facing B is next. Cutting is hard. And I probably need to take a break now. This is my second attempt at doing a fly zipper. The first time, I did not succeed. I've got some basting stitches here just through the top to mark where, um, well, to mark something and something else. Not quite sure what. These directions were very unclear to me. I have this stitched and reinforced down here, but I couldn't figure out what the center front line meant. Is it that one? Is it that one? That one? That one? I don't know. So I looked up a tutorial online and I'm just going to do what these instructions say, which is a basting stitch kind of in between the two that they've marked. So in between. Here and here, the little basting stitch. What's next? Press the seam allowance open. This is making some sense. We pressed it open and then I folded it back along that line. And now it looks like we're gonna put a zipper in. So, where my damn zipper go? Oh. Found it. Okay, let's get the show on the road. Let's start sewing our zipper. Okay, so I just finished sewing the fly, the outer fly line. I got to here. And then I crunched down on my metal zipper, which is not great. I guess I put the zipper too low. Is that what happened? Let's hold off. I'm gonna seam rip my basting stitch that was holding the zipper closed. So we're not even. We got that much room for that notch and way less room for this notch. I feel like I was on the right track, but it went awry. All right, I'm undoing all that because it just didn't seem right. I hope I'm not ripping my fabric here. Oh my goodness. Let's cut out the basting stitches and see what happens next. This time I just winged it. I didn't even follow either instruction. <laughs> Do you see that? It's just popping open and off. So that extra folding trick I tried to do was not a good move. This is my last attempt at doing a fly front. I have stitched down here, which is going to be a right open fly. I'm not optimistic. Here's what we got. We got a little bit of overhang there. Do we? I don't even know if we do. But I've pulled out quite a lot of stitches through here <laughs> multiple times. Looking at the zipper opening. We're that far and we're that far. 
that looks good. I think I may have figured it out. All right, guys, did I master the fly front? Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. We're gonna connect the inner bottom leg seams before we sew together our two back pieces to each other. So I'm gonna show you what I've got here on the back now. I've got a gaping hole. Not cool girl, but I like his move. Let's start sewing the back seam. We're making good progress. <laughs> if I can make any sense of what's going on. Here is our front fly. And I've attached the back of the shorts. Oh my gosh, these shorts are ridiculous. <laughs> We're going to be putting right sides together and sewing the side seams together. I think they're going to be really 80s style. We might be looking at a disaster. <laughs> Let's do a try on. The bottom line is when I made the length uh, adjustment, the petite adjustment, I could have certainly gone for the full inch rather than half an inch. And I may have even considered doing an inch and a half. This is a seven inch zipper. And that's a high rise short, even on somebody who's taller than I am. I did make a slight adjustment to the inner front dart. I made it so that it was just a little bit more darty. Uh, in other words, the dart was wider so that it's taking in more space. I was hoping that would help get rid of a little bit of this bulgy area that I have here. And it didn't seem to do the trick the way I was hoping it would. Maybe rather than doing the inner dart, I should have done the outer dart. It's worthwhile for me to take the time, go back and fix it because I tend to regret it if I don't. <laughs> so let's work on these front darts. Here's to sewing our first waistband. Let's go. Don't skip your interfacing, guys. Carrying on, our interfacing is applied. I need to machine baste one and three quarters from the long unnotched edge. If you're sewing a wide seam, there's a couple of different ways to cheat. You can draw a line on your fabric where you need to sew the stitch. Or you can use this little magnetic seam guide. It just pops onto your machine and that's gonna support your fabric on the edge right where you want your seam to be. So I'm gonna use both of those to help me with this. Beautiful. Instead of button here, buttonhole here, we're doing buttonhole here button here. So let me show you an example to make this more clear. The fly opens on the right, which is the same direction that my fly opens. So the button is going to go on this side. And that side is going to be a little bit extended in length because it needs support for the button. So this guy is going to go like that. Um, we're going to line up center back and center front and then sew in our waistband and this other side is where i'm going to do my first buttonhole this side is just going to be flush with the zipper line this is what mine's going to be like <laughs> you want to see me stitch the ditch I already have this seam here. So this is the ditch. And I'm trying to put a second seam in that exact line because I need to connect the back of the waistband. So what I've got here is it's folded under. And then this is a little bit overlapping the bottom side where that um, where the ditch is. And we're going to try to enclose the inside of our waistband by stitching the ditch. 
It's kind of hard to line it up. I'm not on the ditch, but I'm doing my best. <laughs> I think I'm a little too far. Oh, my eyes. Maybe a little too far that way? No, maybe I'm pretty close. I can't really tell. Let's keep going. I don't know how people could line it up perfectly. The ditch is stitched. Woo! I did pretty good in the center here. Look at, I don't even see it there. Looks pretty good. And check out the back. Yeah, we've got a waistband. Next up, a buttonhole. <laughs> it's time to pick a button. Handmade with love, basic black. We've got a winner. Let's talk about this blinged out button holder that I got on Poshmark for six bucks. It comes with a variety of templates and I'll be using the 5 8 inch for my one half inch button. This attachment is bulky. How the heck do we attach it to the machine? Guide the fork arm at the top there over the needle clamp and then fasten it securely to the presser bar. Remember to attach the feed dog cover plate to the machine. This prevents the feed dogs from moving the fabric, which the template will be doing for you. The first time I was practicing these buttonholes, I settled on a width of four, 12 stitches per inch, and I went one time around. That was just with two layers of thin polyester fabric. Now we're going to be working with two layers of interfacing and two layers of cotton fabric. So that might change, but that's going to be our starting point. Let's go! I will take it. How do we cut this puppy open? It's quite simple. We put needles at both ends. Oh, like so, and then we'll take our seam ripper and we dig right in. The other needle stops you where you need to stop. That's our buttonhole. Let's see if our button fits. Buttonhole comes first and button comes second. Let's figure out where I want it right here. So much adrenaline. Here we go. It ended up a little higher than I wanted it. I'm not sure why. I'll take it. We're at the last step, which is going to be sewing our cuffs. How high do we cuff? If you decide someday to make a pair of cuff shorts, consider using double-sided fabric because I didn't and it took me a heck of a lot of work to figure out how to cuff them so that the right side would be showing. I sewed my matching scrunchie and we're ready for the final reveal. <laughs> Oh my gosh, <laughs> they're so cute. Please like and subscribe. And remember, this was part of a two-piece set. So here's the final reveal. This outfit is fierce. And I can't wait to tell you in my next video how I pulled this look together. Thanks for watching.